Hello everyone and welcome to the Finance and Risk Corner. Today I will explain accrued interest, full and flat prices of bonds under 15 minutes. So let's start with a practical example. So we have a five-year annual pay bond with a par value of $1,000, a coupon rate of 5% and a yield to maturity of 5%. The bond was just issued. If you price the bond by discounting the future cash flows, you would get a price that is equal to par because the coupon rate is equal to the yield to maturity and we're pricing the bond at issuance. Now, what if you're interested in selling the bond three months later? So we now want to price the bond three months after its issuance or three months after you bought it. The golden rule is that any time you discount all the future cash flows on a bond to calculate its price, what you're actually calculating is always the full or dirty price. This, is, this should be something that you do without hesitation. Any time you discount all the cash flows on a bond, it is the full price that you are actually calculating. And the full price includes something that we call accrued interest. So what is accrued interest? So accrued interest is the portion of interest on the period that already passed between two coupon dates. So you bought the bond at issuance and you held it for three months and now you want to calculate accrued interest. Now let's think about the role of a coupon. So look at the first coupon here. When the issuer pays a coupon of $50, they are actually compensating the bondholder for lending them money for one full year, from the issuance date until the end of year one. Look at the third year coupon. This $50, when paid by the issuer, is actually compensating the bondholder for holding the bond for exactly one year from end of year two to end of year three. So you should view those coupons as the interest that is paid to compensate you for holding the bond for a given period. So one more time, if you're looking at the bond three months later, the accrued interest is actually three months over 12. That's the portion of time that already passed since the last coupon payment. So three divided by 12 multiplied by the coupon payment of 50. This is the coupon that will be paid next on the next coupon payment date. Three over 12 multiplied by 50 is the accrued interest. So if you look at the same bond, but now three months later, i.e. six months after the bond was issued, accrued interest would simply be six over 12, 12 because there are 12 months in a year, obviously. So six over 12 multiplied by 50, which is the value of the next coupon, would actually be accrued interest. Now, please understand that this interest is accrued, but not paid. Because you already held the bond for three months, then you are already entitled to three divided by 12 times the coupon payment that will be repaid at the end of the year. So even though the interest is today accrued, it is not paid and it will be paid nine months later at the end of the year. Still, because you held the bond for three months, you are entitled to those three months out of 12 of interest. Now imagine that investor B wants to buy that bond from you. So three months after you bought the bond, investor B reaches out to buy that bond. They should pay you when they acquire the bond from you, they should pay you any accrued interest. So they should pay you three divided by 12 times 50. And how do we reconcile things? At the end of the period, investor B is still holding the bond and the issuer will actually pay investor B $50. This $50 is basically compensating investor B for holding the bond for nine months, but it is also compensating investor B for the portion of interest that investor B paid you when you sold them the bond. So if you think about it, when B buys the bond from you, they pay you in advance your portion of the coupon payment that the issuer will actually pay at the end of the period. So one last time, when the issuer pays $50 to investor B, this 50 is at the same time compensating B for holding the bond for nine months out of 12 and also paying back B the interest payment that B paid you when they acquired the bond from you three months after issuance. So this is the concept of an accrued interest and how things go. Now we know, and please without any hesitation, that any time we discount 
all the future value of uh, future cash flows on a bond, what we're actually calculating is the full price. No hesitation here. And the full price includes accrued interest. And now you can know why. Because you are discounting the full $50 without really asking yourself what portion of the $50 belongs to you and what portion of the $50 belongs to investor B or any investor that held the bond for any time period during that given year. So this is the full price and it includes accrued interest again because we're looking at the full cash flow without distinction when it comes to who is entitled to receive a portion of that cash flow now the flat price is simply the full price minus accrued interest there is something quite weird that happens in the fixed income universe and it confuses a lot of cfa candidates when you quote a bond when you look at the screen to find the price of a bond it is generally quoted at the flat price so the quoted price the one that you see is the flat price but when you decide to buy the bond you pay that flat price and you paid any accrued interest to the holder of the bond when you buy the bond from them so you always basically end up paying the full price and the confusion happens because many candidates ask themselves, why do we quote the bond at the flat price, knowing that we end up paying the full price? We also call it, by the way, the invoice price. Why do we quote the flat or clean price when we actually end up always paying the full price when we buy the bond? And the answer is simple. Look at this part of the slide here. When a coupon payment was just made, accrued interest is zero. Why? Because no time passed since the last coupon payment. Now, as time is passing, think one month later, the accrued interest is already one over 12 times the coupon. That's the portion of the interest that already accrued. Again, it will be paid when the coupon is paid, but it's already an accrued yet unpaid interest. Now, three months later, three out of 12 or three divided by 12 times the coupon times the 50 in our case is accrued interest. You can obviously see that as time passes, then the accrued interest is building up. And then one second before the next coupon is paid, accrued interest is actually 50. It is equal to the amount of the coupon payment that will be made one second later and then the second the coupon payment is made accrued interest falls sharply back to zero because everything that was accrued was just paid so accrued interest start again at zero and then the cycle repeats itself now think about it the full price includes accrued interest if you quote the full price, then the full price would increase over time because accrued interest is building up. And then suddenly the full price will collapse because accrued interest goes to zero as soon as a coupon payment is made. Investors would be completely confused because they would see the price of the bond. Again, if it was quoted at the full price, they would see the price of the bond going up without really knowing if the price of the bond is just going up because of the accrued interest or because the bond is seeing an improvement in its credit worthiness or because the interest rates are going down or the yield is going down. So for that reason, what we quote is the flat price because it does not contain, it does not include accrued interest. So it is not impacted by how accrued interest builds over time and then goes to zero and then the cycle repeats itself. This is why we quote the bond at the flat price. So whenever the bond price goes up or down, it's going up or down for reasons other than accrued interest. Still, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to buy a bond, you'd have to pay the flat price and any accrued interest on that bond. One last thing before we move to a practical example. The second a coupon payment is made, since there is no accrued interest, then the full price is equal to the flat price at that point in time. And then as time passes and accrued interest builds up, the full price will inflate while the flat price will remain the same if nothing else changes. So we now know why we quote the bond at the flat price and not the full price. Let's take a practical example to consolidate everything we've seen together. So we are now interested in pricing the bond, but 2.5 years after its issuance. 
So I want you to think that you bought the bond at issuance, you held it for 2.5 years, and at that point in time, you want to sell it. So let's first calculate the full price of the bond, which we also call the dirty price. Golden rule. All we have to do is to discount the future value or discount all the future cash flows on the bond to come up with the uh, full price. So at that point in time, first, please note that the first two cash flows are now completely irrelevant because whoever buys the bond here will only get to enjoy the future cash flows, not the ones that already occurred and were already paid. So we now have three future cash flows, one of $50 occurring six months from now. Remember, we are at year 2.5 and the next cash flow comes at the end of the year. So we have six months until this cash flow is received. Now there is a second cash flow of $50, which happens 18 months from now. This is 18 months from today. And we have a remaining cash flow of par plus the last coupon, 1050 occurring at the end of year five, which is exactly 2.5 years from now. If you calculate the present value of those cash flows, for example, you discount the first cash flow of 50 at 1 plus yield to the power of 0, 0.5. Why? Because you're discounting that cash flow for half a year. And then the second cash flow is discounted at 1 plus the yield to maturity to the power 18 over 12, which is 1.5. Why? Again, because you're discounting this cash flow for a full year and a half. So calculating the present values of those cash flows and summing them up, you get the full price of 1024. There's a bad news. Your calculator cannot help you. If you use the time value of money application, the calculator cannot help you because what value would you input for N? N is 2.5 years, but the problem is the calculator cannot deal with periods that are not even, that are not equal in length. And what we have here is a cash flow that occurs in six months, and then we have several periods of one year. So we have the first period of six months, and then two periods of one year. The calculator cannot deal with that, and if you input n equals to 2.5, it cannot understand that there remains 2.5 years to maturity. The good news is, you still can do the calculations, and without going the long way, because doing like what I did here, manually, uh, discounting each cash flow would take a lot of time on the exam and we don't want to lose precious time on the exam. So there is a faster way. The smart thing to do here, if you wanted to calculate the full price at year 2.5, all you have to do is to calculate the value, the price of the bond at the closest previous coupon date, which is year two. Calculate the price of the bond here, and the good news is your calculator can now help you. Because if you're valuing the bond at the end of year 2 instead of 2.5, even though the question asks for 2.5, but start by doing 2, then you have three even periods. The three periods that you have are equal in length one year. So the calculator can now help you. N is equal to 3. The payment is the coupon of 50. The face value is 1,000. The yield is 5. Compute the present value, it's 1,000. You have valued the bond at the end of year two, i.e. the beginning of year three. Now, please note that this is both the full and the flat price of the bond because no accrued interest exists when a coupon was just paid. Now, all you need to do to price the bond at year 2.5 is to recognize that a bond grows at its yield to maturity. So all you have to do is to grow the bond price 1,000 as of the end of year two, grow it for six months at the bond's yield. So 1,000 multiplied by one plus yield to the power 0 0.5 would give you 1,024.70. So the trick is simply to use the calculator to price the bond at the closest previous coupon payment and then simply grow that value by the yield to maturity for whatever time period that is relevant. In this case, half a year you would get 1,024.70, exactly like the value we obtained when we used the long way, which is to PV every single cash flow and then sum them. Now, how would we calculate the flat price? We know that the full price is 1,024.70. 
we know that the flat price is full minus accrued. The accrued interest in that case, you need to check for the time that already passed since the last coupon payment. So you are pricing the bond at the year 2.5. So six months has passed or have passed since the last coupon payment. So six over 12, this is a six, obviously, six over 12 multiplied by 50 would give you $25. There is an accrued interest of $25. So $1,024.70 minus $25 would get you the flat price of $999.70. Even though we're a bit uh, uh, more than 15 minutes, but you need to focus on two things before we close. First, when the coupon equals the yield, it is the flat price that is equal to par and not the full price. If you calculate the full price of the bond here, even if the coupon and the yield are equal, the full price will not be equal to par. Confirmation, the full price is 1024.70, even though the coupon and the yield are equal. What is actually equal to par is the flat price of the bond. Now the remaining thing, why is it not, why is it not exactly par value? Why is it 999.70 and not 1000? This will always be the case because if you consider accrued interest, you would realize that it ignores time value of money. At the year 2.5, the accrued interest is $25, but they, need, they will be really paid at the end of the year, i.e. the $25 will be repaid six months from now and not now. But we know that in practice, when we buy or sell the bond, we pay the accrued interest without consideration to time value. So we actually, if we're buying the bond, we pay an accrued of 25. This is slightly higher than what we should have paid. We should have paid the present value of 25. Again, in practice, we will ignore time value of money here. And it is because we are paying slightly more than what we should have, this explains why the flat price of the bond is slightly less than it what, what it should have been, which is par value. So that's it for accrued interest, full and flat prices for fixed income securities. With some practice, the concepts, of course, would become clearer. See you soon in the next video.